Thank you all for joining us on this special occasion. And I'd like to take um, a moment to thank the on-site staff, and that includes the property manager, Addie Dominguez, and the main <laughs> supervisor, Mike And I thank them for um, all their work of putting this event together, as well as their hard work throughout the renovations to keep our residents informed and doing their very best to minimize the inconvenience to the residents. A big thank you to our residents who are here as well. And it does not go unrecognized that occupied rehabs can be very challenging. And we thank you for working with us through this process. Through this collaborative effort, you can see the result is a beautiful renovated building and we are very proud to welcome you here today. With that being said, I'll turn the program over to POA project manager, Charlie Durack. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, good morning, everyone. And welcome to Tribune Apartments. My name is Charlie. I'm a project manager for preservation of affordable housing. I had the pleasure of managing the rehab here at Tribune Apartments. Um, so this is a very exciting day. This is going to be a great celebration. Um, you can see from the program that we have a full lineup of speakers today, so I'll be very, very brief. But I did just quickly want to thank uh, also some of the team members who were really instrumental in the success of this project. Um, so first, as Kathleen mentioned, the residents, this is why they're why we do this work. Um, so thank you to the residents. They were really great partners on a, a tricky occupied rehab um, project. And so personally, I want to thank them for their cooperation. Um, Kathleen also mentioned the site management team, Addie, Mike, Rick, Sean, the whole team. Uh, you guys did a great job on the day-to-day -day coordination uh, with the residents and the construction team. Um, so again, I want to thank you all. And finally, the design and construction team, Delphi, Jose Guzman from Guzman Proofer Architects. Uh, these guys did a lot of great work in a pretty short period of time, uh, which is very impressive. So thank you guys. Um, so we're going to get into the, the speaking program. And up first, we have Aaron Gornstein, Poe President and CEO. Tribune Apartments is actually two buildings. There's the Tribune Building, which was constructed in 1892, and then the Victory Building, which is built in the early 1900s. And as its name suggests, it the Tribune was originally home to a local newspaper, and that was the Framingham Tribune. Now, for Framingham historians, I don't know if that be ultimately became the Metro West Daily News or not, but no, okay. So it, it no longer uh, exists in any current form, but the buildings were joined and converted to housing in 1982 under a comprehensive permit under Chapter 40B. And it's been an important contributor to the Irving Square Historic District and has been home to 53 senior households. And so POA purchased the property in 2013. And our goal was to preserve the affordability uh, over the long term. Uh, we need as much affordable housing as we can in Framingham and in Massachusetts. So it's critical that we uh, acquire these and, and make sure the residents can stay for as long as they want, and also carry out badly needed renovations um, and historic preservation measures. So we, be we began construction in February of this year, 2017, and uh, with uh, the design and construction partners that uh, Charlie mentioned, we completed the rehab in under a year. So it was right on schedule, very quick, and we appreciate uh, the work from Delphi and uh, Guzman Proofer on that. We, uh, so some of the scope of work that we completed, and you'll see on the tour, uh, we have all new windows, uh, kitchen and bath improvements, common area lighting and flooring upgrades, community space renovations, new management office, a new roofing system, uh, renovation to both community rooms, including this one, a new HVAC, and a brand new uh, fire suppression sprinkler system. So it's a, a lot of work and uh, it, it all looks so great. Also, we're really excited to partner with Bay Path Elder Services, which will provide uh, resident service coordination and work directly with our management staff 
to ensure our residents are connected with a range of supportive services and community programs to focus on positive outcomes for our residents. And so there will be a variety of services offered, and um, this will allow the senior households living here to remain in the community, living independently for as long as possible, and age with dignity and independence. So bringing in the additional support services was a key part of our initiative here as part of uh, the renovations as well. And Bay Path is also going to have a full-time <coughs> office for a resident consultation, which is just down the hall from where we're here right now. Uh, okay, so to wrap up, I want to just thank our financial partners. You'll hear from many of them, but let me just list them out, and I guess they're here. Maybe I don't have to mention anything, um, but I will. So Department of Housing and Community Development, um, I want to acknowledge Bill Cole, CDAC for the pre-development assistance. You'll hear from Roger. The Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston provided uh, direct subsidy, and Theo Noel and Joanne Sullivan are here, so thank you very much, Theo. Um, the TD Charitable Foundation, uh, Mass Housing Investment Corporation, the Mass Historical Commission, now the city of Framingham, not the town of Framingham. We have the uh, planning and development staff, Natalie Jean, and then the town manager, Bob Halpin. So thank you for that. So let me introduce uh, Wade Blackman, uh, who's with the Congresswoman's office. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and the Congresswoman wishes she could be here today with you to celebrate the completion of construction on this beautiful building. And thank you to POA for letting our office share this moment with you today. Thank you to POA and all the partners and collaborators who made this possible. Um, as Aaron mentioned, you know, it, it, there are many pieces to this. You've talked about the federal bill, the tax bill, um, and, you know, these programs and all of the collaborators and advocates all work in concert together, and without one of them, you know, the whole thing kind of doesn't work to its full capacity. So certainly, as stated, the Congresswoman in her role on Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development Subcommittee on Appropriations will continue to partner with you to advocate for the much-needed programs and investment in affordable housing. Thank you again for all of your work. Um, thank you, Wade. Uh, and, and to all of our speakers, I just want to say that I, I apologize if I read off my crib sheet here. I was saying to the senator that I have a three-month-old son at home, so I have not slept in, since September. Um, so I couldn't remember all your bios. But up next, we do have Senator Karen Spilka, uh, who was originally elected to the House of Representatives in 2001, where she served for three years, was then sworn in as a state senator uh, in 2005. Since 2015, uh, she's served as the chair of the Senate Committee on, of Ways and Means. Most importantly, obviously, she represents the district that's home to Tribune Apartments. So welcome, Senator Spilka. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. These 53 freshly renovated apartments will be a critical resource for Framingham seniors and for people with disabilities. And they are in the heart of downtown. So that's especially wonderful uh, that this has taken place and where it's taken place. I'm always a proud, proud to partner with our federal, state, and local leaders and in our continued efforts to increase access to affordable, quality housing and to have the services, as you heard, necessary to make sure that people live as independently and self-sufficiently within our communities for as long as they want and as long as they can. You know, I, I um, was on the way here. I actually was listening to some people speaking about the need for quality, affordable housing, not only in Massachusetts, but across the country, that most housing units have been the higher end we know those will take care of themselves, but we need to really make a concerted effort to ensure that people have quality, affordable housing at all levels. And, you know, the, especially in light of the way that housing prices are skyrocketing and affording, affordable housing options are becoming increasingly limited. So these apartments are a key piece to the affordable housing puzzle in our community, a real critical piece. 
and I look forward to continuing working with all of us that are here and beyond to in continue to increase affordable housing in Framingham, in Metro West, and across the state. I think it's important that our budget focuses on that, and that was one of my uh, focuses for, for this year um, in trying to increase quality affordable housing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Um, up next, we have Representative Jack Lewis from the Massachusetts House of Representatives, was sworn in in January of 2017, is currently serving on a number of committees, uh, notably the Joint Committee on Children, Families, and Persons with Disability, Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture, Public Health, and Public Service. He's obviously a very busy guy, so we're lucky to have him here today. Uh, as you all know, Framingham is on the precipice of great change. Uh, things are changing. A uh, couple elections behind us. We're going to have a, a mayor and be a city in, in moments. And I think for me, it's so important to pause during these times and remember and celebrate our rich history as a town, but also figure out a way not to live in the past as well. Figure out how to preserve the past while also boldly going into the future. And I think that's when, or that's where conversations around affordable housing and historic preservation really come together. Uh, I'm excited about all the work going on in downtown Framingham. Uh, downtown Renaissance in particular is just revolutionizing you know, our downtown area and it's great to be joined by Courtney as well who's spearheading that effort. I think today's your birthday. Uh, so thank you for joining us all here on your birthday. Uh, but I think we have this important obligation to remember that while we're working to make sure Framingham has the tools at its disposal to live into the 21st century, that we remember that Framingham also needs to be an affordable community. Uh, it's always been a community where people actually lived. And while we move boldly forward, we need to make sure that affordable housing is preserved as well. Uh, and I'm committed to continuing to work with our Congresswoman, uh, but also our Framingham delegation, Karen Spilka, uh, and the other two representatives that represent Framingham on Beacon Hill, uh, Carmen Gentile and Chris Walsh. I think I can speak for all of us in saying we are committed to making sure that housing remains affordable and doing everything in our power to do just that. So I'm excited to learn more about the great work that has gone he on here in this building uh, and the great things that are in our future together. Thank you so much. All right, so up next we have Tom Lyons who is acting director of Mass Housing. Uh, Tom has been with the agency for over 13 years, so I'm sure he's seen a number of POA deals come across his desk. Uh, and I have here that we have worked with Mass Housing uh, on construction and permanent lending on over 20 projects. Um, so they are a uh, frequent partner of POA's, so please welcome Tom Lyons. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, and good morning. It's, it's a pleasure to be here for the uh, completion of the renovations of the Tribute uh, Apartments. The Tribute Apartment is an important housing resource for, this, for the town slash city of uh, Framingham, and more importantly, the residents who will live here for many years. Just as important, the support services the residents will receive here, allowing to, them to live here more independently in a vibrant downtown housing community. I'd like to congratulate POA for its dedication and commitment to creating and preserving top quality affordable housing for residents throughout the Commonwealth. Mass Housing has been involved in 20 multifamily housing transactions over the years with POA and have created or preserved over 2,500 units of critically needed affordable housing. I'd also like to thank our partners in the Baker Polito administration, particularly DHCD, for making housing a top priority. It's no secret that we need to produce thousands of new housing units to ensure the continued economic success of Massachusetts. We are committed to the hard, working hand in hand with the administration to produce those housing units for our senior citizens, working families, and low and moderate income house, households. I also need to acknowledge our partners in the federal government and the private sector. Without many of those important transactions would never have been completed. And finally, congratulations to the town of Framingham for its support for its, 
for its support for this important project and commitment to affordable housing. Without local support, it makes it very difficult to complete a project like Tribune Towers uh, Apartments. Once again, congratulations to everyone in this project, and we're looking forward to being a part of many more projects in Framingham. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, up next, we have Roger Herzog from the Community Economic Development Assistance Corporation, or CDAC. Um, CDAC works with CDCs and nonprofits like POA to secure affordable and supportive housing at Tribune. They provided very valuable short-term financing to POA to allow us to secure Tribune apartments on very short notice. Uh, it was a critical resource, so we're happy to welcome Roger Herzog from CDAC. Great. CDAC has been involved with almost all of POA's projects, preservation projects, in Massachusetts, which makes sense because we have missions that are very well aligned. As Charlie said, CDAC works with nonprofit housing organizations across the state, and one of our distinct expertise lies in housing preservation. In fact, uh, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, and um, we are uh, putting out blogs, and this week's blog happens to be written by uh, a person who really started CDAC on the path into housing preservation, and really the entire state, uh, Vince O'Donnell, who is now also a special advisor to POA. And uh, for the last 20 plus years, starting with Vince's leadership, but CDAC has been uh, very committed to preserving properties just like Tribune Apartments and others across the state. Um, it turns out it's a very important week for housing preservation here in Framingham. Uh, not only are we celebrating Tribune Apartments, but yesterday the CDAC board approved some early funding support for 160 units of existing affordable rental housing in Framingham, the Kachichuit Co-op, which uh, is a very important resource, um, and the co-op residents there are working on refinancing that property and extending the affordability. It's all Section 8, so again, a very important federal housing resource that's being preserved here in Framingham for low and moderate income residents. Um, as Charlie said, uh, CDAC played a role back in 2013 working with our colleagues at MHIC to help POA acquire the property, and we provided about $3 million of acquisition financing. And we also uh, worked very closely with the state's Department of Housing and Community Development on sev several of the capital subsidy progr programs that were invested here. In fact, the last time I was here was in March 2016, when in this same space, which was not as well renovated as it is now, um, uh, there was a funding announcement with uh, the Lieutenant Governor and Crystal Cornegay, the Undersecretary for Housing, and many others uh, announcing funding awards in a special, what we call, supportive housing funding round. And uh, Senator Spilka really described it well, the importance of the support services that are being uh, really built into the program here at Tribune Apartments that will allow the residents to what we say age in place and stay here in the community and not have to move to other more institutional settings. So um, CDAC working with DACD uh, helped uh, bring in about three million dollars of these state capital funds. I am dwelling on that because um, these funds come out of a housing bond bill that the state passes every few years. And in fact, we have a current bond bill that is pending in the legislature. And uh, we know that our uh, state elected officials are supportive of that. It's a one and a half billion dollar bond bill that we are hoping to get approved uh, in the next few months. So with that, I wanna just uh, offer congratulations to the residents, to POA, to all our uh, funding partners. I want to give a shout out to Bill Brauner, who's CDAC's Housing Preservation Policy Manager, and uh, we look forward to future work together. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. 
Uh, up next, we have Joe Flatley, who is president and CEO of Mass uh, Housing Investment Corporation, or MHIC. Um, they are another outstanding and consistent partner of POA. As of today, we've closed on 19 projects for a total investment of $110 million. Um, we're excited to be closing out another great deal with Joe and his firm. So please welcome Joe Flatley. Thanks, Charlie. Um, I was just going to mention myself that this was our, our 19th transaction. I was surprised that Tom Lyon mentioned that they've done 20. So I'm trying to figure out what is the one deal that, went, <laughs> that we didn't, that we weren't included in. Um, but we've been working with POA for a long time. Um, and as, as was mentioned, this is our 19th investment. Um, we got involved early on in the acquisition. Um, I was trying to think back when that acquisition was. And I was actually kind of surprised to learn that it was only four years ago. Um, because normally affordable housing takes, I mean, you, you probably think this has been a long time, four years, but that's actually pretty quick to go through an acquisition process, assemble the subsidy resources, get the construction done, and have a project completed in four years is actually about the quickest I think I've ever seen it. So congratulations to the POA team. Um, we're proud to be your partner um, on this. We were involved in the acquisition financing with, with CDAC. We also provided the, the LIHTC financing. I want to come back to that in a minute. Um, and we also got involved with the Federal Home Loan Bank for the first time. Um, the Federal Home Loan Bank, um, a few years ago, allowed organizations like us, we're, even though our name sounds like we're a state agency, we're a private nonprofit that raises money primarily from financial institutions to invest in affordable housing and community development. And a few years ago, the Federal Home Loan Bank allowed organizations, nonprofits like ours, um, to become direct members. And we use that. Um, for this project to apply for their subsidy money. And so we put in a second mortgage on the property as well as um, $500,000 in direct subsidy to the project. Um, I wanna, I'm the one who gets to stand up here and, and, and speak, but the, it's really our team back at MHIC. And I wanna acknowledge that team, um, Kathy McGilvery, who's our director of investment over there. And the underwriter is Amen Mahmoud, who's the one who really worked on this project. These projects don't happen easily, and they depend, as has been said, to a large extent on a lot of public resources and public-private partnerships. Um, that partnership and the structure for that partnership depends on um, a few critical resources, one of which is, in this case, private activity bonds. It sounds very boring. It's 4% four, it's 4 tax credits, but it's actually what finance, provided the bulk of the financing to make this possible. And recently, um, as Aaron mentioned, the House version of tax reform um, would have eliminated private activity bonds. Uh, it also would have eliminated federal historic tax credits. It also would have eliminated the New Markets Tax Credit Program. Um, we've heard over recent days hopeful signs that these programs will be preserved. And I think, I mean, although the process has been largely controlled by Republicans, I think it's a sign that these programs really do have support from both parties because they've demonstrated what's being demonstrated here today. And to the extent that people in Congress of both parties see this happening, I think they can recognize the importance of continuing these programs. So we are very hopeful. We have heard good things over the last 24 hours that these programs would be preserved. It really would have been disastrous for those of us trying to preserve housing like this um, if, if it had not been done. But anyway, we're proud to be your partner. Congratulations to the whole POA team, Aaron, Charlie, Roger, Patricia, everybody. Um, this really has been a great effort. We're proud to be your partner. We're looking forward to the 20th project, um, working with you and, uh, and catching up with Mass Housing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Um, so we're very excited for our next uh, speaker. She is the, the first ever mayor-elect of the new city of, of Framingham. Um, she's a longtime Framingham, an active resident of, of Framingham. Um, please welcome Mayor-elect Devon Spicer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of our partners in this work to making sure that Framingham remains an affordable community. When I first moved here in 1985, I lived three blocks away from here on Eames Street. And um, I was so grateful that I could find an affordable apartment to, uh, to live in, making $18,000 a year. 
uh, but very proud of my $18,000, and I lived at 20 Eames Street, and it was affordable at that time for me, and uh, as I came here to work in our schools. And being a kid from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, I am born and raised in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, and I also know what it's like to struggle and not know whether we can afford to pay the rent or pay the light bill and make those difficult decisions. And so for me, during this election, one of the things that has remained very important to me is to make sure that the people of Framingham can live and work in this community. I also have spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks, particularly here in southern Framingham, as I have promised uh, during this campaign, because if our people are not thriving in downtown, then we are, as a whole community, cannot thrive. And so I am putting a lot of my energy in thinking about uh, our underserved areas, making sure that there's more affordable housing, that people can stay here. And even people, young people starting a career, like myself, can afford to live in Framingham. And that's something that I am grateful for these wonderful partners across the board, including our delegation uh, uh, at the State House, in making sure that this continues for Framingham. I, as mayor-elect, am very, very excited about this opportunity to lead our city in a way that we've never even imagined. There's a lot of good stuff that has happened in Framingham, a lot of good stuff. And all I plan to do is build upon that and make this process a little faster than four years. I said, you know, because I know people are looking right now. And if there's ways to become much more efficient in that, I want to do that. Uh, also, looking at other ways in which people are living in their homes, but how are we providing other services for them in the community that also supports their well-being uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, those are the other kinds of things that I'm looking at working with our agencies to, to build that capacity. Um, during this campaign, I, I will tell you, I met a number of people who said to me, I believe that you understand. And it's not so much what you say, it's what you do that is going to matter. And I truly believe that uh, the partners in this work, you've demonstrated your commitment and I thank you for that. And going forward, I am going to be relying on you to help me guide this process even further because there are plenty of other properties that can be renovated and utilized into affordable housing. And I want to make sure that we are working on this together and I'm doing what I can in order to move the needle. So thank you. Okay. All right, so our, our final speaker is actually a resident uh, at Tribune Apartments, Samuel Salguero. If you could please join us and say a few words. Thank you very much, Thank you. Uh, Good morning, America. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you to to the administration for, for uh, making me live in this building because uh, I'm not rich man, I'm not very important man, you know, but uh, I feel so happy to, today because I, I, I feel like my family. We gotta, we gotta live in this way, in this world. We live in beautiful, I mean, we live in very, very difficult uh, time. Everybody, we need a beautiful smiling. Everybody, we need a high or something like that to make it happy to people. God bless you, America. And uh, I live alone in, in Massachusetts because my children and my wife, they not here. My children, they, they live in LA. And my wife, she went there to see my children too. But uh, I feel so happy between you. And uh, I wanna say thank you to the company too for uh, I don't have to say too much because you can see the building. 